Welcome back. You're watching The Front Row. We are talking about the biggest news in town currently, the nomination of Lady Justice Martha Kome for the position of Chief Justice, an announcement unanimously taken by the Judicial Service Commission who made the announcement this afternoon. So what then does this mean? She is nominated, a whole other process that uh, is expected to be taken before she is formally appointed Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya. A woman of many firsts, and we'd really love to hear your thoughts about this. Remember, text us on 22155, uh, tweet us at Akisa Wandera, at KTNUSKE. The hashtag to use is the front row. And back to my panelists, Professor Agenda, you mentioned that perhaps the nomination of uh, Lady Justice Martha Kome would mean that a different relationship between the judiciary and the executive than what has been witnessed in the past. But then how delicate will this balance be for her while on one hand maintaining a good relationship with the other arms of government and on the other hand ensuring that the independence of the judiciary which is very fundamental is not tampered with? I, I, I think that that is um, a balance which a good chief justice must find uh, because um, a chief justice must ensure that uh, while they ensure that um, there is ease with which the three the other two arms of government work with the judiciary or the three arms of government work they ensure that judges maintain their independence and that the institution of the judiciary remains respected. Remember, the practice of law thrives only in an environment where there is respect of the judiciary, and it is only out of uh, the respect of the judiciary that court, court orders are respected and implemented. Where the public uh, feels that there is no independence of an arm of government or the judiciary, then that is when you find uh, 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 the public uh, starting to ignore court orders, and you then find that the public then, you get into a situation of, uh, of uh, anarchy and where there's disobedience uh, of uh, a non-implementation non of court orders. So I, I know that uh, Judge Kome has been in the judiciary for many, many years, since 2012. She was in the Court of Appeal from 2012. She's been in court from uh, 2010. And she is a judge who understands the necessity of maintaining this independence and must trot that balance, ensure that that balance is keenly maintained. Remember, the judiciary needs the parliament in implementing their budget. Uh, when you present estimates before parliament, parliament must pass those, those estimates so that a vote of monies that uh, is sent to the judiciary fund and that runs the judiciary is, 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 is taken through the process. And then there's the oversight role of parliament. That must also be undertaken by parliament. But then the other role of the executive is key. The standoff that we've had between the executive and the judiciary has not been a healthy one, where we've had a standoff on the swearing in of judges. We hope that Judge Kome will navigate this impasse to the benefit of the public, because the public is what the public needs judges working in court, and also for the benefit of the judiciary. But we must have that mutual respect of institutions for this country to move forward. Right. Kissinger, the last time you were on the show, this is something you spoke very passionate about, and I want you to come in at this point. How easy or hard is it going to be for Lady Justice uh, Martha Kome to balance this out? I think the well, we seem to really have a, a problem with that. Kissinger, let's sort that out. We'll be coming to you shortly once we've sorted that out. And I'd still really need you to respond to that question. Let me pick it with uh, Maria Mbeneka, who's an advocate, looking at uh, how 
She has carried herself throughout the interviewing process to where we are now. What do you think would be the biggest issues that Martha Kome needs to start addressing once appointed Chief Justice? Um, the, obvious, the obvious issue right now will be to ensure that the judiciary is well funded. Because you remember that the former CJ, that was the biggest um, perhaps challenge he had as a, as a chief justice. And uh, it really hampered the operations of the judiciary. It hampered the rolling out of uh, the digitization program that, you, that uh, has now seen everybody um, essentially having to take out their matters or to take on their matters online and uh, even the judiciary having to work online. So for it to be effective, because it's not yet as effective as we want it to be, the incoming CJ has a full tray in ensuring that um, she negotiates and negotiates really strongly, uh, both with the um, parliament and the, the executive and ensures that the judiciary is well resourced. Um, coming at a time where um, you, even the judiciary is rolling out um, a special specialized court such as the one that was launched uh, yesterday by the D the deputy chief justice Milu uh, small claims court is um, now a pilot and I'm I'm certain that it would have been the desire of the judiciary to have this court rolled out across the country because it's it's impossible to imagine that it is only in Nairobi where small claims would be handled and handled well so we have seen also um, the you know, stifling or this complete uh, grind to a halt of the mobile courts. This has actually affected delivery of service in the judiciary. Um, we have seen um, some in some stations uh, that are not well, you know, resourced in terms of personnel. Um, a lot of uh, backlog in some of the courts, such as the Employment and Labor Relations Court. So we have also the adoption of um, ADR by the judiciary, this is yet to be fully implemented and smoothly for that matter. So the incoming CJ, Amatha Kome, has a lot of work to do in ensuring that the judiciary performs at an optimum because Kenyans expect that their matters would be heard and heard mm -hmm. in a timely manner because the justice delayed is justice denied. And across the country, the judiciary is held as a blast bastion of democracy. So we expect that for, a, for the judiciary to work and to work efficiently, the incoming CJ will have to do a lot in terms of improving relations with um, the executive because of ensuring that funds are flowing to the judiciary and also engaging the um, parliament appropriately. Professor Ojenda, looking at uh, some of the biggest issues pending, and Maria Mbeneka has uh, really articulated them well, the funding of the judiciary is a big deal. The appointment of uh, 40 judges also a big deal, and you mentioned it earlier. Looking at some of these pending issues, how different do we expect, 41 judges rather, how different do we expect um, uh, Martha Kome to handle this. When you look at the tenure of David Maraga, what shifts do we expect? Uh, as I said, the shift that we expect uh, is a definite shift for the better. Uh, I say so because uh, the land court, for instance, does not have sufficient judges. Uh, the land court is a special court uh, uh, established under uh, the Land Act, uh, and clearly the number of judges we have cannot make that court function. The same to the, to the, to the, to the Labor Court, the ELRC Court. And the 41 judges in question, if sworn in, will populate these courts and ensure that work moves. I'll tell you this, the Land Court in Nairobi, for instance, is giving dates in 2022. So if you have a land matter and you get an injunction in your matter, you are stuck before judges because there's no date to, in fact, in some end of 2022 or 2023, it is, it is unfortunate. So that 
Judge Kome, in ensuring that the 41 judges are sworn in, will have helped the judiciary move to the next step. Secondly, uh, as I said, the, the budget question of the judiciary has been a big, big problem. Previously, we were on 17 billion as the budget for the judicial, judicial arm of, 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 of government. But now, we then slip to 14 billion. And I think in the last budget, uh, the, the former Chief Justice indicated that uh, there was a time when we only had 50 million for development in the judiciary. And yet there are courts that are incomplete. I, I, I think that the judiciary should move to a minimum budgetary allocation of at least 2.5% of the total budget so that it can function. You cannot have badly paid judicial officers and badly paid judicial staff. You cannot function in that manner. So we hope that Judge Kome will ensure that magistrates and judges are remunerated well, that they have functional independence that can only be, uh, 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 we can only ensure works when they have sufficient financial independence as well. That judges can do circuits comfortably. They can go to stations where there are no judges and, and render service. That even the 41 judges that will be appointed will be resourced to ensure that they perform. That even what we have now, the framework, we, we operate under uh, uh, information, uh, IT, under, uh, under good networks for every station, so that even those that are outside the 4G network can be able to do trials online. And I think, I think resources, the judiciary is one under-resourced institution. This must be dealt with. It looks like a full entry. There are a lot of questions that are coming up, and especially that Kenya will be heading into an election in a year's time. But before that, let's just take it back a bit and revisit Lady Justice Martha Kome's interview by the JSC. Kome was put to task over a controversial ruling, a bench she sat on during a public holiday made in the absence of some of the parties to the case, barely as to the chaotic 2017 repeat presidential polls. Let's take a look at that. With 33 years legal experience, appellate judge Martha Kome was a third candidate before the Judicial Service Commission to defend her suitability for the Chief Justice job. I'm proud to be associated with the 2010 Constitution. I was a chairperson of FINDA, and in FINDA we, are spearheaded, we spearheaded law reform that has led to a raft of reforms. But the ghosts of the bitterly disputed 2017 polls came to haunt the judge over a controversial ruling by a bench she was a member on a public holiday. Only a day to the October 26, 2017 chaotic repeat presidential poll. In the ruling, the court overturned an earlier verdict in which High Court Judge George Odunga had ruled that returning officers and their deputies recruited by electoral body IEBC to oversee the next day's polls were in office illegally. This was um, a determination of an election which is taking place the next day. Presidential election which mm. is taking place. The okay, next day. so, it so was you were called, urgent. you I sat, called, I came. as a member of that bench, did you, for example, ask where is counsel for the other party? We did ask, but we were told and the council argued the matter is very urgent. Procedurally, litigants file their cases at the registry, after which the matter is referred to the duty judge, who subsequently gives the directions on service of court papers to the concerned parties and slots hearing dates. Did the bench establish whether or not the CJ had authorized a sitting outside hours, the importance of the matter notwithstanding? My supervisor is the president of the court. So if the president of the court has uh, 
and paneled a bench and he has uh, drawn a course list asking that I come and sit. It would have been in subordination on my part to say I will not come to court. Attorney General Kihara Kariyuki, who at the time was the appellate court president and whose current position allows him to sit at the interviewing panel, did not delve into the matter, originating from a query filed at the JSC against Kome by activist Halef Halifa, the prevailing JSC stalemate with President Uhuru Kenyatta, as the JSC cited retired Chief Justice David Maraga's futile calls to the head of state. I have faith. I'm a woman of faith. I believe I will be able to explain why I want to speak to His Excellency to have a meeting. And I believe he will give me because it's not for myself. It's not for my sake as uh, Martha. One of the courts, in my view, that has lost its, its identity is the commercial court, which was meant to ensure that the process of resolution of dispute is efficient, effective, and within the shortest time possible. How will you address that problem? There is mediation. And you know commercial transactions really begin with an agreement. People who entered into an agreement can always sit down and resolve the problem arising out of the agreement. All right, and a lot of issues came out of that particular question on sitting on a public holiday with uh, not all parties present. And our panelists will be helping us uh, break down these issues. Uh, let's take a quick break. You're watching The Front Row. We'll be back with more.